I'm high as I've ever been, higher than heaven sits. Roll up my weed and think about my exes and jealousness, how to stay current and relevant. Yo, hey guys, it's me again, and today I'm going to be installing my new processor and motherboard inside my gaming PC. So basically, um, during Amazon Prime Day, uh, I was shopping around for some PC products and everything, and I found this AMD Ryzen 5 3600 XT uh, for around 240 bucks, along with this uh, MSI... Um, B550 uh, motherboard so here is the unboxing and everything this is what you're gonna need to install your new processor and your new motherboard inside your existing PC so here I'm just unboxing the processor and everything um, this 3600 XT does come included with the AMD Wraith Stealth uh, cooler so this cooler does a pretty good job as being a cheap stock cooler. You really don't have to uh, buy anything more expensive unless you want to overclock it. So this motherboard is a MSI B550 board. It's one of the newer B550 ones that came out in, in around June. Comes with a bunch of goodies in the box, of course, all your information and stuff about the product and other products from MSI, uh, your sticker. Um, your spacers for your motherboard, a uh, few SATA cables, uh, the installation guide and your manual, and of course the motherboard. Okay. So basically to start off installing your processor into your new motherboard um, at the end of the one of the edges or one of the corners I should say of your processing chip there is a little triangle and on the motherboard there is an identical triangle so you're gonna want to uh, line up that corner with the, that corner with the triangle on it on the motherboard and um, lift up your little pin to hold it in put it in there and close it to seal it and honestly that's basically it um, besides the cooler installing a processor takes like two seconds I swear in a motherboard the, the cooling part uh, is what takes a little longer um, this Wraith Stealth uh, cooler um, the motherboard already had these two uh, like little socket things not sockets but these two little holders for a cooler on the sides of the the processing chip where the processor would go but for this race stealth cooler uh, you have to unscrew it and screw in the cooler onto the motherboard there's some more expensive coolers out there that just clip right on with a few little uh, with, a, with a little mechanism they just slide right on and then you just clamp it to secure it that's a lot easier than screwing it into your motherboard where you could probably break something or anything just be careful and for most motherboards it should be just a regular Phillips head screwdriver so just go ahead and use any Phillips screwdriver that you have it should work I've noticed that the the screws holding the two pieces in for the cooler they're they were very hard like they were very hard to come out so uh, you might have to use a little bit of muscle some a little bit of elbow grease to get get them off but once they're off you can go ahead and install your cooler Real simple, takes a few minutes. So once you have your motherboard and processor basically complete, um, you're gonna wanna take off your existing components from your old motherboard. Um, so of course, start off with the graphics card, it's the, probably the biggest thing there, the easiest thing there. My, my graphics card is huge, let me tell you. It's a 1070 Ti uh, with a triple fan layout and this thing is huge and honestly with my micro ATX board that I had in there before um, it got stuck like over the years it's been in there for quite a while and it got stuck and I accidentally <laughs> broke off the PCIe uh, little connector 
um, along with the graphics card. The graphics card is fine. It was just a little plastic piece that came off with it. You guys can see right here, the little plastic shroud that, um, where it connects the graphics card to the pins and the motherboard came off. It still works. I tried it afterwards on the motherboard. It's just some of the pins are kind of bent, but honestly, as long as they're making contact with the, the connector on the GPU, um, it still should work fine as long as it's um, installed correctly and bolted in from the back because you're not really gonna have any PCIe support because the little plastic thing cam, uh, came off. But that's okay, right? So after that, you're gonna start unplugging all the stuff that plugs into your old motherboard. Um, I would suggest like keeping track of everything that you take out, um, like where they plug into, because you're gonna plug them right back in in your new motherboard. Um, for the most part, uh, they're the same type of connectors and pins. Um, so just make sure you like take a picture before and after so you know where each one goes. Uh, the motherboards are labeled, so they have like little like writings in there, like this is for like USB one, this is for this connector, this is your SATA connector and this and that. So if you're, if you're having trouble with uh, the connectors and everything, um, just look into your, your, your guide, your little manual that comes with your new motherboard. It should tell you basically everything you need to know. Um, and if not, just look up pictures online um, or stuff online of where things go. I'll try and include a little graphic to help you guys out. But after that, basically take out your RAM, um, take out the screws holding your motherboard in into your PC case and just take it out and swap it in that that's basically all you have to do you might have to do some cable management um, especially if you're upgrading in size from like a micro ATX board to a full size regular ATX board um, you might have to move some cables around and especially because motherboards have different connectors in different areas you're gonna you might need to stretch the cable a little farther than it would than it would be in your existing motherboard. So like for example, my, my SATA connectors were, were a lot closer to the drives on my old motherboard than my new motherboard. So I had to like um, run them around uh, the side of the other case, I mean the other side of the case um, to make them stretch that little bit longer that I need to put them on the new one. Okay. So basically, like I said, um, after you have your old motherboard out, it's just a matter of putting everything back together with your new stuff, with your new motherboard, a new processor. So you might have a few fans in the way. Um, just unscrew those also. Uh, don't break them or anything. Just make sure to put them back in place and make sure everything is connected. So if your PC case um, isn't really meant for gaming or anything, you might need some spacers. So like my motherboard included uh, some spacers, really small little things so that uh, your motherboard itself um, doesn't uh, touch the metal casing of the PC, because that could fry the electronics and stuff, uh, the circuits on the whole motherboard. So it's probably best to have like an elevated surface for your motherboard, not connecting, not touching anything. So you make sure um, you don't fry anything on your motherboard. But I just went ahead and just installed it on the same way my old motherboard was. There's no spacers or anything on mine, because this is uh, a gaming PC case. All right. And I also use the same screws as my old motherboard. Um, but like I said before, since this is a full size ATX board, you're probably gonna need a few more screws. Uh, I don't think mine came with screws, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, my motherboard didn't come with any screws, so just go ahead and use the existing ones. Um, it should hold it in place just fine. Uh, if it is wiggling at the end, just you might have to buy some more screws to hold it in place. Okay. But after 
it's all uh, screwed in and everything. You can start installing your components back in. So I'm installing my RAM here. And the RAM, um, for each motherboard, it might be different. Um, so it might need a different configuration with your different RAM uh, slots. So for mine, it's like one, and then you leave the second one, and uh, you hit the third one, and then leave the fourth one, or something like that. It, it should all be in your manual, in your guide for your new motherboard. It tells you where the RAM should go if you only have two sticks. Um, if you have four sticks, of course, just put them all in. It really doesn't matter the order, but if you have two, just read, read, the, read your manual. It tells you basically everything you need to know. Okay. So after you have everything installed, uh, make sure everything's correct. You don't want to start up your PC and have something um, plugged in the wrong way on this uh, pin or this pin on the motherboard and for it to blow up or something. So just double check. Um, your work, make sure everything's in place, read your manual, um, it'll probably tell you everything, where everything should go. And if it starts up, um, it should automatically go to the BIOS of your motherboard. So this is the MSI one, the MSI BIOS. And after that, you just boot it up and uh, Windows should start normally. And after that, just uh, put in your installation discs, install everything on there. Uh, it probably gives you directions, of course, in your manual or your guide for your motherboard. So just install all the software and everything you need, all the drivers, and you should be good. So honestly, this doesn't take that long. Uh, it might take like an hour or so, depending on how good you are um, and how prepared you are. Um, I really wasn't that as prepared as I should have been. I had to read the manual a couple of times, especially for the RAM and everything. Um, just make sure everything is plugged in. Of course, like I said, you don't want to fry anything or blow up your gaming PC. So yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. I know that um, the, my past videos have been kind of all over the place. I've been doing my car videos. Um, I've been doing uh, an iPhone video, an iPhone ad uh, that was base boosted. Yeah, I'm kind of doing a lot of things here and there, um, and now I'm doing PC parts. Um, but let me know what you guys want to want to see on the channel um, coming up. Maybe upgrade my computer some more, um, a new cooler, maybe um, some new fans because my my existing fans. Um, they're they don't cool as well and they're not rgb um like cars are with carbon fiber um computer guys are with rgb you have to have like your rgb stuff to be cool you have to have your carbon fiber stuff on your car to be cool so i might want to upgrade my old fans and make them rgb this motherboard does have rgb so it looks kind of nice so let me know what you guys think about it so yeah, I guess that's about it for this video. Uh, see you guys later. Peace.